Valerian had won. He had secured his throne, his line, his title, and his dynasty. And now, with smart marriages and investments, he had begun to solidify his power and reconsolidate his rule. First by securing a marriage to the newly named Queen of Volantis, and secondly, by funding and repairing much of the damage done to Tolos and Mantaris, two cities which had become more accustomed to being sieged and torn apart during war than anyone else. They had lost more lives than any other city, yet the Emperor had hoped to merely sate them with gold to keep them calm, repairing the city, not repairing the lost lives. With many of Malerus' debts paid out on her death, and the treasuries of Bathan and Aelix seized, there was much wealth for Valerian to work with, and, perhaps more importantly, many who would be willing to finance him alone. In his mind of how wealthy he was, it would be easy to pay off said loans. So his mind immediately turned to expansion. Expansion of his realms, and of his castles. Illyria had grown larger and larger, and now both the keep and city would need major renovations to afford any expansion. For there was no more lands to build on. The isle was in many ways full. Some architects had named ideas for possible routes for. But the idea which stuck out to Valerian was one that would make him immortal. For all who saw Majesty's Keep from that day forth would remember his name. As such, the new building plans formed by Zehefri Asir were chosen. Plans which would demolish the two outdated seven towers and the walls to construct a massive single tower as a new main keep to be named as Valerian's Hold. The Black Tower, the primary castle of Majesty's Keep, would be redesigned to suit a large empire, rather than merely being a castle for an isle. It would be expanded, more Blackstone built onto it, and the Black Tower would now be known as Ifelix's Tower, after the Black Dread himself. A few more towers would be built around the sides, and while part of the original plan had called for a new temple to be constructed, Valerian instead chose to scrap this idea, as he said it would save costs. These renovations would take years. They would take his whole lifetime of how ambitious they were, but if he was to start them, he would need coin, and he knew where to get it. He had decided to make personal travel on Dragonback, to the city where gold was no object. He flew to Bravos and made himself closely acquainted with the Iron Bank. There was no question or doubt within the city of his power and his danger, which made negotiations easy. People knew the vast treasuries and incomes of North Illyria would make any of the other three cities of beyond Bravos whimper in shock and awe, and therefore North Illyria could afford even the most lucrative of loans. And perhaps more importantly, many knew that a dragon could serve many a purpose. If they ever needed aid... Who would say no to a Dragon King's protection? He was granted a true bounty, a high amount of gold, in return for monthly payments and a promise of defensive protection towards Bravos. This gold would let him build his mighty palace, but also granted him some extra expenses, some further wealth to spend. His small council recommended he spend it upon expansions to the military. The army had been battered badly during the war and showcased weakness in many key areas. Valerian, however, did not see the point while he still had his dragons, and believed it could be better spent elsewhere. He granted gold to surveyors in the lands of Long Summer, and began new colonies along the coastline of what had once been the landlocked city of Oros, establishing ports where there had never been any, building supply depots, as well as the basics and beginnings of a small community, one that might grow as time passed with extra attention being paid to Oros itself, for the lands were flat and still somewhat fertile compared to the rest. Quite quickly, people began to move from elsewhere to these new colonies, intrigued by the prospect of living on the coast of Oros, living on a coastline that hadn't existed during the times of Valyria, on a sea that existed purely of fog and misery, with Valyria itself visible upon the horizon. If he could just build supply links from Oros, if he could 
of ships sail from those ports. That horrid sea would not seem so insurmountable. That choking fog may begin to fade. And maybe, just maybe, Valerian could be the one to claim that city. Valerian could reach Valyria. Hello guys, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, a game of thrones where we are playing as Emperor Valerian, the king slash emperor of North Valyria, and also happens to be a uh, dynastic king slayer because he brought to an end the rule, or the potential rule, of Bathan the Chase, and took his throne. Bathan, of course, actually died a natural death, and technically it was Alix he usurped. Alix, who is now of age, a 16-year-old. Uh, as is uh, Meleris, our wife slash the Queen of Atlantis. So that's definitely interesting. A lot happened last session, and hopefully this session we're going to be having a bit more peace. Something you can see is that our colonies have been strengthened enough in this region for us to begin, or at least try to establish some colonies in the south, in Oros and the like. If we can set up something here, we are so close to actually possibly setting up a Valyrian colony. We actually, we actually border it now. We officially border it. This is very, very exciting. Because, like, through here, for example, we couldn't do it because we don't border it. Oh? Oh, it's within two sea provinces. So all of Illyria is now within two sea provinces of us. That's good to know. That's very good to know. What about Egress? Is Egress within two? Interesting. Well, we can begin moving our way down south. And that is a very exciting prospect to us. Uh, but it's going to be a very long prospect, and undoubtedly Valyria is our target. We're going to need to see success from Oros, and we're going to need to see some wealth. We've reclaimed the Port of Sighs. Port of Sighs is going to be ours. Uh, and he's been repaid by being the one lucky enough to venture into Oros here, uh, Lord Tarafen. Another Valyrian, so of course he gets far more prestige than the others. I mean, basically, he has to be Valyrian if he wants any land here. I don't think we have any non-Valyrians outside of Calf, and that's just because Calf was sort of more taken through subjugation. Not Calf, sorry, Geese. We've not taken Calf, but maybe in the future. Uh, don't know why he would have. Oh, because he was when he was king, he would have had that. Improve Valyria, but the work is direction is wasteful. Oh yes. So the that one is because we have indeed taken out a loan to improve the capital, Illyria. And it's going to cost us money and taxes, so it's going to be a long birth. And they've also funded the increase of Medial Mark because it was incredibly easy to do so. I believe Medial Mark was only about um, five gold to uh, begin work. Well, not five, five gold, it's about 200 gold to begin uh, sort of fixing it up a bit, which, realistically speaking, we can afford. We can always afford that. We always are going to try with that, so. Lots of schemes popping up immediately. Of course, once more, every single time I take over as a monarch, I push us in at some form of bet. And almost always the bet never bothers us, because by the time those pop-ups come for the event, We've paid it off, or usually they don't come up because either the person that loaned from has died, which is a mechanic, or, and the most common one so far is they just get paid off when I die, which is why I lose a lot of money each time I die. But we had actually paid off most of Malaris' debt, which is let's take out our own debt here. A couple thousand gold as well, so not a cheap debt. I think about 6,000 I had to take out. So we're not in a cheap spot. Uh, we didn't have to take out as much loan as we needed because we did also sell some slaves and we have ransomed a couple. Oh, this is a war. War of Tyranny.
It's also Podby. My wife Malaris is pregnant, and whoever her heir is will actually inherit Volantis. Money continues to flow through the trade port in Tolos. But your relationship with the Sovereign family from Kar has owned its tower. To teach me a lesson, without going to war, I could arrange for a mob to storm the trade post. Yes. We've been presented... Uh, He's presented me with a significant problem and hope that you will use your influence to spare his trade port. Hmm. I'll take both. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take the trade port and the money. But there's not an option to refuse the money and it's still the story's trade port. First wife Rainies is pregnant. Probably not late nor the end raid. He inherited the city of Nugi, so I assume that means he won his war and has quote unquote inherited that title by killing probably whoever had it before. The dark rest may be good for my child's future health, but it's proven to be detrimental to my wife's mental stability. She's finding it harder to sleep at night. Oh dear. Doesn't like me much. Oh, because she's a claimant to my title mainly. And also, she likes me and hates me because of Abomination of Incest. That is very funny. A lot of them are now pushing for increased cancel power. Hmm. Prince, Prince Chaharis from North Illyria. Who is that? The uncle of Alex? Or... Yeah, he's the uncle of Alex. What a weird claimant to push for. Um, we can buy something nice. Apparently she didn't like it by the looks of the fact she just had a relation with me. That's been a shit gift then. My bad. The wall has fallen to the wildlands. They attacked the wall in great numbers and overwhelmed the defense of the Night Watch. Lord... Lord commands the Lancer Pain to take the side of the south and is trying to galvanize a. I don't think he's taking them south, but it looks like he got captured at Castle Black. And it's now owned by High Chief Arthur of the Wall. Son was born to Emperor Valerum, North Illyria, and Empress Malerus of Illyria, named Juhiris. Also hair lipped. It's the only congenital trait I've ever seen that is this consistent with hair lips. Of course my my uh, first son May also has it. For my first wife we had Elonara. You can or how about you? Aolana, Aolana, can teach you etiquette. And you're, why is he in hiding? What's going on in? Oh, because Valantis is at war. They should have the troops to win this. What are they fighting? Valantis slave raid on lease. Oh yeah, and her troops are in lease. I was gonna say. Rebellion. Uh, you should win this. Uh, how Sagon should have no ordinary troops. Sagon's in an interesting state right now. Uh, obviously, Tristan One Eye was their their founder all the way so long ago now. But his uh, son Javero was murdered, and then uh, his wife died in the dungeons of Valar, uh, only for. Scenario here to 
be their current ruler. One of our... It's realistically, I would, I would now say our, our many Valyrian houses, because we also have... Uh, this is te te technically Valyrian, but... I will drive them from our lands. But you know, we have House Eralean here, House Tarfion, House Painminion, House uh, Raganar, which with the cool bridge that I love. And I, I personally head candidate, so it represents these bridges. Uh, and obviously House Einar, one of the largest. And there's also other small houses within here. Oh, another, actually, another Painminion. Interesting. She's incapable. She's been declared incapable. Assume that's probably so her regent can take over. How interesting. And weirdly, of course, we actually have House Targaryen over here. The few remaining members. There are only four living members still of House Targaryen. And Aethon is one of them. His son, Vera, or his daughter, Vera. There is a chance, you know, if they're only from Jaehaerys, the Black Dragon, Aenys of Dragonstone, the one who basically lost the Iron Throne. What a fool. Uh, if we raise our Yunkai troops, I think that should be enough. Let's do a bit of upgrading. Oh, we can upgrade the Castle Tower, but I'll take all our money. Uh, let's get the Barracks. Uh, here we will upgrade the cast down just because it's a lower level. No clue how long it's going to take to upgrade. I suppose it's going to rely on how good our uh, Castillan is. Let's send these troops all the way over here. Because I don't think they're going to move from there in that whole time. Let's see if they prove me wrong and move at all from the place they cannot see each. Your Chief General Tesha has come to your session. It is my opinion that Master Rosano of Servite would make an excellent military commander. Very well. I am not one to question good and sage advice. Right, it's the Cinder coin flip. Magor has gained diligent. We'll take that. It's been a while since we've had a an heir actually win the coin flat. Please spend more time with me. My wife has tried to have... To, uh... Okay, she tried to have him, him arrested. He fled, but then he actually decided, okay, I'm not going to flee. Interesting decision. It's like, I could finally talk in private with my wife. Uh, build a war chest. I need to f obtain a thousand. Fall in love. Let's build a war chest. Let's sit on our gold for a while. We, we earn so much now compared to at the start of this game, where, where we were constantly struggling for money. It's good to be able to just sit on wealth for a bit. Okay, they, they ran away because they couldn't siege. Melis is now ridden by Daemon of, Dif of Driftmark. Oh. My loyal Vathor has sent me a courtier of an offer. She's willing to make a significant donation to the war chest, but in return, you must promise her a favour. You're my wife. Sure. I would have just probably done what you asked me anyway, but getting 200 gold, I'm not going to say no to. Extort subjects. Beware that the actions will have to rankle. The mental health of rulers who care for their subjects may take damage from this action. Let's have a look. So melee or march will pay extra tax. Or um, uh the clergy of Tolus surely do not need help. Tolus uses private farm and catapults, that seems awful. Uh we'll just take the one from Melee or March then. Local revolt isn't that bad.
Interestingly, it only seems to be uh, direct holdings that get affected by that event. I would have thought it would be my actual vassals and my subjects, not my direct holdings here. What's my brother doing? He's uh, wounded and stressed. Uh, but he is obviously a dragon rider with a tiny little uh, Lephilos. I humbly ask that you intervene on my behalf against the aggression of Lord Belechio Hestia. So this guy rose against you. You lost? How did you lose? Is this guy of a dragon? No, you just suck. Alright, stand down. He says no. What do you mean there's nothing I can do? I abs There's absolutely surely something I can do. Okay, well, I'm just going to keep losing prestige if I keep doing that, so that probably wasn't smart. Am I able to offer to join your war? No, because you're my vassal. Oh, is it because Mantaris? So Mantaris has joined to fight him. Surely they win this, then, if Mantaris is coming to help now. He literally couldn't beat a vassal with lesser men alone, so he had to call in an ally to fight. Not a good look for uh, Anagaria here. If I was looking for a list of strong vessels, I don't think he would be on it. Do you wonder if we're going to be able, if we can just immediately colonize Valyria? Because I don't think Valyria has a coast, unless that little sliver. Up here or down here is meant to be the coast. But whichever law, law is the one to take, or not take, but land in Valyria, you know, start colonizing Valyria, that's going to be sort of the legend here. We've not really, if I look back on the kings, we've definitely had good kings since Rhaegar. But I don't, I wouldn't say that we've had any like legends. Rhaegar is like this family's legend. It's the reason he's the only one with a bloodline, and he's got three of them. <laughs> but he is, he is like the man, not only founded the dynasty and rode on the back of majesty, but, you know, he also got us to the Empire title. So, you know, no one else can even claim to be the Empire Maker. That was also Rhaegar's job. All done within his lifetime. Everyone's still living within his shadows. Vassal is this? Oh, it's him. Um, let's obligate him. See if that works. Because we're, we're not actually, sadly, not that good at anything. But we do at least have very good court slash state diplomacy and all of these. Just because of how good our um, council is and how good uh, our, we are beyond those as positions as well. Maybe it's... I. Am, that's a point I'll let you just so maybe have a better chance on this. Because he's way better at that, at that job. My wife likes me sending her some random bard's head. Why would I send you a letter? No. You need this bard's head. I don't know what these cuts are, or these like markings are. I don't know if that's from a trait, a culture thing, or if it's just a glitch in this mod. Most likely, I think it's a glitch, because we also saw those with um, Paramount Reggae on his cheeks. It's, it, it's as if the cheeks are slightly misaligned. Unless there is an explanation for it. And if there is, then I'd be happy to hear it. Okay, we're up to 20 monthly gold. And that's with a reduction to our primary gold source of uh, Illyria while it upgrades. See, upgrading these would be expensive as well. I mean, 6,000. 6,000, yeah. Mantaris and Tolis would be very expensive. Melior March would be only 1,800. So Melior March could be one for the future to upgrade. But right now, what we're saving here could be useful to just see how far we can get into the area. Lechurlian uh, is being ridden by Lord's uh, Oh no, Princess Kala is the one who rides it. Kala Cinder? She has a Valyrian steel sword? She has majesty! 
She must have been the, the next inheritor of it then. After uh, the Princess Anubalesa's lost it. Princess Kalasinda. Married to Lord Jaquas. Oh no, a second wife, not even the main wife. A lunatic as well. She... Majesty seems like it's just going to bounce around for a while. Not a lot we can do about that. Unless I maybe buy it back in future. It could be expensive though. It could be... I need to basically just sit and wait until it's in the hands where I can easily access it and sort of maybe threaten slash take it. Because it would be good to have Majesty back as like the air sword or like, you know, the... A Dark Sister-esque Brother's Sword. It'd be very good to have that. I do love this crown. It's very, um... Aegon-esque, because of the he I love headbands. Headbands are better than crowns. Ooh! Yes! Oh my goodness! We've been talking for a long time about how this place would never expand. And finally it's happened. The voluntary slave raid of Mir on the Magister of Mir. God damn it. Uh, let's get basic defenses here. We're going to start spending a little bit just so we can upgrade Port of Size. Because this place has for so long been an advanced colony that just wouldn't push to the top level. And that finally has. Master Bazaar of the Iron Pyramid. Oh, he's a city within Yunka. And he just embarrassed my brother, basically. Why are you always bloody? I guess it's the wounded tray. Why are you what wounded you? I wish I could see. I assume it was probably a fight. Oh, I'd keep losing Archons. Can Archons stop dying for like a couple days, please? Just, just so I can keep doing this work. Extort subjects again. Um I mean, we'll do the port size because them having a local tax modifier thing literally doesn't affect me. Because it is so minor. This one is a little worse, but... Oh my, oh my! Manus and Gripness are two sides of the same coin, and every time a new cinder is born, the gods toss a coin in the air. And it appears Prince Marys is a genius. And Firecatcher is being ridden by uh, Macy's of Tikwu. Who's a Illyrian. Make an offer to buy. Sure, I'll take a Dragon Rider for 45 gold. Cheers, mate. <laughs> That's so nice of you. Where is Meraxes right now? It's, uh... Yeah, this Septon dude is the rider. Really don't know how that happened. But it is weird. But up in... Pookie. The Chorian. Hell is Chorian. Oh, it's these ones. Ugh, I can't I can't do it. Volantis has to deal with that. If Volantis loses that colony, I'll be upset with him. No, I'm not selling Macy's. She has a dragon. Oh, and, she, and the dragon's affectionate and ravenous. Why is the the dragon not come? Is a dragon locked in the fire pit? In the dragon pit? Very good. Oh, I'd say. Why is... Because she has the whip, right? Yeah, she has fire catch's whip, but the dragon isn't coming. Let's see if I can get this dragon. Because mine. Because it doesn't even have the locked in the dragon pit modifier. So it should be able to move. Who? Lord Basimore of Milk. I don't... No. Ask your own lord for that. Oh, my wife is ill. Or my, uh... Niece wife? Or is she my... What would her relation be? So she is... No, she's just a cousin. Yeah, she's a cousin. He hatched a dragon, Laraxes. Okay. Maybe I should have taken him into my court. Oh, you're the rider of Volon. That's why you're important. Uh, keep getting. I keep thinking that all the dragons are dying out. And yeah, and I look and we 
have a bunch of dragons still. In fact, there's still a, white, a wild dragon of White Claw uh, in Anagaria. Interesting. And a couple of dragon eggs, mostly owned by uh, the Lady of Astapor. N okay, not us. So a couple are in our realm, but then some are in Astapor. So three are in our realm, and then some are elsewhere. Oh. I shouldn't have said much. I'm sorry, kid. Um, whoops. I didn't realize dragons could die. Yeah, so it was born sick and misshapen. Oof. That's a shame. This is the main guy pushing for it. Oh yeah, he's the giant boss. So he's a direct vessel. He knows does have a kid. I'm very close to getting our goal at least. Though I may quickly spend a little bit to upgrade Maybe the castle. You know, we'll wait until it's 1000 and then we'll do the castle town. And then we'll save up again and see if we can do any colonizing down there. Let's attend the party banquet. In the halls of Yunkai, which is where I grew up and ruled for a while. Maris is becoming a decent fighter. Let's get you on struggle then. Because your brother's on duty. Build a war chest. Now I can only really set to... Uh, let's adopt the lifestyle, because I don't have any hobbits. Hobbits. Any hobbies. Princess Chihira is attractive. Very nice. Uh, brooding and rowdy. Should be a good kid. Might be a better ad than Magor, honestly. <laughs> what I could really do with... Is if Azan if Azantis could lay some eggs for me, so I could grant them to my kids. Let's see, could I? I can colonize Valyria. Usually, I'd say we go all the way around. I think we just have to do it. It's going to be expensive. But I think we have to give it a go. We are the ones to first lay our ships, sail ships from the ports of Yugos. This, uh... oh, it's still a colony. What about Oros? Okay, Oros is an advanced colony, so from Oros, we sail ships, we sail ships south. Let's see, can he even afford stuff? Oh, he does have an army. Okay, so yeah, he's fine. But we send our army south and into Valyria. Uh, we don't want to hold the temple on that. Here we are. This is, like... These isles are incredible because of the Valyrian mines. Volcanic activity is uh, really interesting because it means that dra yeah, dragons have a size growth and life expectancy for living here. Valyrian architecture as well gives tax income and fort level. And it is, of course, a huge Essosi Valyrian fortress. But upgrading any of these is kind of pointless until we can actually... Get these events to fire and get it up in colony level. But we've done it. We've we've laid the first seeds of Valyria. My hope, my true, genuine hope, is that we can colonize Valyria, get Valyria built up, and then turn Ill Illyria into the air title. Have two massive cities. Like, imagine dra if in s your, the air title, instead of the air title being Dragonstone, it was bloody Old Town. That's what we're talking about in terms of power level between uh, king and air here. King Fear of the Iron Throne appears to be in a civil war against the Plums. Sorry, how could I forget the Plums who happen to be the Kings of the Rock? Sorry, the Emperors of the Rock. Jesus, what is going on in Westeros? And they're fighting over the War of Westerlander independence. Of course they are.
My goodness. I, I almost don't want to, don't look over it. That's just because there's no point. The only thing I'll look over is I want to see how this war beyond the walls is going. Are they winning or losing? <laughs> okay, they're, the North is definitively winning this. Where are they? Apparently Regal leads my armies now. I mean, he's got 22 combat advantage, so it makes sense why he would. I've noticed that my chief general, uh, Requiem, is a hard worker. And that everyone seems to like her. Sound up between her height and her morale, trying to recruit more men. Uh, let's get morale up. Oh, religious skulls for 50 gold. Religious skulls, religious scrolls. That's what I meant to say. For 50 gold. Interesting, so this actually has a garrison of 6,000 men already? Yeah, I didn't want to click click any of these, but I accidentally clicked, and so I have to click one. Okay, thank god they said no. I didn't want to sell my Dragon Rider. Whoops. Yeah, I mean, Illyria is incredible, so we also have holdings we can build. We can build castles here, a whole bunch of castles, in fact. Like, Valyria is a true capital. This what? This is actually the most unified we've seen the Iron Throne, I want to know. This is the most unified we've seen the Iron Throne. But it's only because we've seen a unified Westerlands. The Westerlands and Reach. The Reach Lords swearing fealty to the Westerlands of, in Morn Hill. Not even... Uh, he doesn't own Castle Rock. No, the, the family owns Castle Rock. But they don't actually own it directly themselves. Never... New Geese keeps wanting to be liberated, and I keep saying, let's not liberate New Geese. Uh, 7,000. Can I get any more? Sure, I'm going to get 3,000 in Astapor. Actually, that's not enough ships. You know what? You just stand down. That, you're not going to be helpful here. <laughs> let's just get the Tolos army. Use these ships, honestly. I should just always use these ships because these ships completely outnumber all of my other fleets. Build over here. Get Ragal and Iz Izano. Not a dragon, but just a good fighter. Okay. Your slave Maceris was known to ride a dragon before she was captured, and she would never reveal what happened to it. That was until the day when the dragon came to Illyria. The beast killed many of your guards, who stopped to film uh, Maces mounting the dragon and flying away. Damn it! How did her dragon do that? Her dragon's literally over here! So she escaped because of the eye catcher. I mean, that makes sense. That does make sense. So, how much we do? Yeah, we have minus 2,000. So There's not much point building gold because we're almost always going to be in negatives on gold. We can build barracks because I do think. Uh, yeah, minus 34. Whoa, 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 what's this? You are drawn to a large, cheerful ground staring in front of a tall building in Garn. It seems they may have gathered to watch the antics of a man who has climbed on the building's roof. The despairing man, tired of the mishaps of life, is threatening to jump, and several onlookers are goading him on. You hurry inside the building and join this man on the roof. No! Stay away, he cries when he sees you. You slowly climb on the ledge next to him. I just want to talk, you say as you edge closer. You have to talk to the man. You speak gently with the man, addressing him as an equal and friend. As you talk, you carefully guide the conversation, and suddenly make him realise the folly of ending his life. The crowd dismay, he agrees to come down with you. 
I wonder what the, that would be the talk of the town, wouldn't it? You'd imagine today people would tell stories of what a kind and gentle man he was to do this, but the town folk, they'd be, they'd be at the pub furious that the king stepped in and stopped their good fun. Uh, yeah, let's say I owe you a favour. He wanted Zoklos. I mean, honestly, he could take Zoklos just because it's, it's a shit province. Oh, goodness. Well, I'm going to have to pay for both of these, and it's going to cost me a lot, because we're absolutely picking uh, the amphitheatre, at least. Because this is uh, incredible for the city. Uh, and then to fix for this, I guess we'll just sell slaves from the camp. Get us out of debt. Does mean we should probably go on another slave hunt. That one, so, wait, this one is, no, neither of those were, yeah, weird. Why sh why either of these are my regents? I guess I'd rather have you as a regent, because you have a dragon, and you fought with me in war on Fafnar, so. Sure, but why are either of you the regent? That's what I want to know. Don't I get to pick my regent? No, you're not. I don't really need a guy of his uh, intrigue. I mean, his intrigue is good, but that's about it. My right, goodness, we're, we're doing incredible on these quote-unquote coin flips here. Maybe there's just something about uh, Valerian as a father that he's actually uh, competent. Maybe we picked the right horse for, for, for King here. He may have a little bit of tyranny, but the, the kids love him. I see his his kind heart. My friend Base Morris invited me to a grand banquet, and we shall attend that as well. I want to be known as a merry king, you know. I want to be, well, we're nearly forty, yeah, nearly forty years old now. So I want to be known as a a respected king at the least. Oh, and now it's time for education. I want her to get to get pretty good education because she. She's really, really uh, strong. No, I'm not going to have anyone marry her. I might, honestly, marry her to Magor. Valax is a new rider. One in, one in the hordes, apparently. Baylor. Interesting. Plus 56 to give him a noble title. But more money to... Hey, I just I don't know him anything, let's be honest. Not everybody's owed some reward from me anytime they do something basic. I do wonder why. It, so, do the other colonies have garrisons? Oh, they do. Okay, so gar so it just in general they do have garrisons. So that's good to know. When you have held a court, made judgments on matters of the realm. Many of your subjects have found your rulings and proclamations rather authoritarian and lacking any consistency. This has meant more revenue and fines and confiscations, but people think you're a tyrant. Your council is urging you to apply the war and more uh, the law in a more even and just manner. So this would give interesting. I am the law. Oh dear, my aunt has passed away, so now Fafnar is uh, hiding in the uh, dragon pits. Apparently one of the courtiers has been annoying my wife. And instead of asking for uh, asking me for help, she took the matters into her own hands and made the sure courtiers would never annoy her again, or she would know the consequences. I mean, she did do the right thing, let's be honest. They need to know their place. Is that my wife? <laughs> My wife rides upon Fafna. Even better. You know, I completely agree with everything you do now that you ride on Fafna. I didn't even need to ride this army. The Lancers did it themselves. Look at that. They, they, they're becoming smarter. Oh, and another rebellion. There's always some other rebellion. 
What? Stop sieging bloody colonies. You gotta stop this. Oh, poor colonies. This is why they never actually advance, because the people who own them just keep going to, in civil wars for no reason. And it does not help me. I'll build Valyrian Mines just so that when it's built, I'll have Valyrian Mines, and I just think it's cool to say that we're building Valyrian Mines. And of course, the best possible education for our heir. Who... A learning focus. Interesting. You're not sure. We've never had more of a, a learned uh, leader. And let's arrange her a betrothal with Jahira. We can marry these two together and then that will secure our line. And possibly marry Maelis and Eleonara or Jaehaerys and Eleonara, not sure. Sirius of Yunkai, my nephew. I'm sure, I'll take my nephew as my ward. I mean, apparently, I'm raising my own kids so well, I might as well raise yours too. She's called in her father. Uh, the crooked Queen Melerisinda, my wife, has called in her, the favor you owe her to force you to pardon her devious crimes. You will no longer be able to take hostile actions against her. I didn't know what crimes you've done, so I wasn't going to do anything against you. But I still don't see what crimes you did, but you must have done something, apparently. Interesting. My brother is the Lord of Mantaris. Of Lord... Interesting. So we have... The Black Cliffs are now separated and he's taken... Uh, Demon Pass and Borash. That can only go well. News has reached out that the claimant of my titles, Prince Vekar, is hiring men for an attack against me. Prince Vekar. Yet another child of uh, Bathan. How many kids does Bathan have? And they want this one, this guy with fever, fatigue, and malaise. And he's got rabies. I want him to be king. Kidding me? I hope the common folks look to that man and they go, why the hell do we want him to be king? Oh, that is a beautiful dragon. Malis. Baf uh, the Fafnar's child. That's fun. Talk to my wife about moderation and she'll ignore it. The lady almost ran to me as I entered the hall. Tearfully, she told me my son, Mago had insulted her again. Let's praise his honesty to the court. It's like, as you all can see, it is truly incredible how easily she calls him fat. And it's true. Yeah, Prince Jaehaerys is one we should marry because Jaehaerys is our son, but also obviously is actually of a different line. Because he's of the... the he's set to a uh, inherit Valantis. But he also obviously has a claim on that area too, so we can't we can't pretend that he couldn't be a potential future threat to Illyria, but I don't think he would be. Hmm. The Lordship of Mantaris. No. That would be even more border gory, honestly, because you don't own Demon's Pass, it would be like this. I'm just going to keep driving over and over again. The only wars I do is driving savages from these lands. Unless this army's going to take care of it? Probably not. Miraxis has a new rider. One of my knights, so I'll take it. Or at least one of my courtiers. My chief general has discovered a man of great military talents called, Je called Jehaman, who is willing to serve. And another good slate, for sure. Having nothing but good events after war after war. This is good. I mean, arguably, we're, in, we're not even... We're about to be 40, I assume. No, we're just over 40. Okay. So Prince Malaris, is this my... 
This is my third born, right? No, he's my second born. Um, give him a decent education, but not the best. Uh, get those two married. Get you a new education focus on Marshall. Which apparently he's perfect for, so that's good to hear here. Summer plantations. Maybe. Oh, a shipyard shop. Wait, lease? Lease owns? How does this lease own these ruins? How did that happen? So that's a new rider. Again, all the main dragons are in are, are in our land. It does make sense because why would you want to be over here between the rock and the iron throne? Both of them look disgusting, by the way. The wall took back the wall, but it looks like they're losing another wall. Yep, they're losing two walls at once, in fact. Spend some time with Meleris again. I can take off Sway now because she does like me. He became my rival. My nephew's my rival. My goodness. His father loves me, but apparently the son can't stand me. Apparently I'm an absolute dick. I'm a very mixed message sort of king, aren't I? That's a brilliant commander. Brilliant commander. Oh. Son, you do me proud. You may not know a thing about stewardship. You may not know how to take care of yourself in intrigue, but you are. Oof, just look at those. And hopefully you get a dragon too, and then you'll be perfect. But look at 35 personal combat, which is actually 60 or 55 before he gets Valyrian Steel. Because he still lists as a child for a tiny bit longer. Whoa, 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 what is this? Emperor Bolasso of North Illyria. What claimant is this? He... He has no claim. He's a... Miravis? What claim does this man have? How does he have a claim? What? Not through his mother. Is it just because he's a dragon rider? So he... He rides Duskfire, so he's trying to do a dragon conquest. Says he has a claim. How does this man have a claim? And what is going on with my vassals? This is... A surprise. Where even would he land? I guess let's get our armies ready. Let's hoping for some peace. But this guy has such a small invasion that I don't really want to end the episode. Before his war. I'm gonna I'm gonna let this episode be a bit longer and deal with his war before the end of the episode if I can. Hopefully it's not a long war. You see where he's gonna land is a thing. Yeah, he's gonna do the trick where he's gonna land in Illyrian, I'm gonna catch him and brutally kill him. With dragons. Uh, Bas Duskfire has killed Bathnar. Why is it with, with young dragons slaying all the dragons and so? But we have caught his armies and slain them. These, these invader wars are kind of annoying because you can't really siege them. You just have to wait for them over and over and over again, and that's a bit annoying. Okay, Marine has committed to the war. Mary Cinder now rides uh, Vadagon. How are you a Cinder? Who are you a Cinder through? Your father, Danny. Oh, through to Haven! My goodness, that's not a line I was expecting to see. The Haven's line. The Haven, of course, being uh, uh, the child of Jaehaerys through um, uh, Bahra. And uh, him and him and his brother uh, were disinherited by... Aemons. That was a long time ago now, in fact. Illyria. 
So this is Meagle's first son. Jahira is just so much better than Meagle. I'm sorry. Look at this. Jahira is a brilliant commander with 50 prowess. I, I said, I know I said too many prowess. I did realize as soon as I close it that it was Jahira because it didn't have the cleft lip. We know it's Meagle through the cleft lip. As a daughter, Senris. Maybe I can find where this guy is. What? He's here? No, he's not. He's in Hazdar. What, leading an army? He actually is. Wow. You surprise me, good sir. Septon Eldrick. Oh, and the Iron Throne's broken up again. Flying high above the armies, the Dragon Rider of Empress Balassa lead a dive attack on you and your allies. We shall cast them down. Jakaris. Didn't catch him on the first path. Yes, you pick out Duskfire, and judge he and its rider can be finished off. You and Azantis dive headlong into them, sending them crashing into the ground, and your dragon tears them apart. They are left dazed with Duskfire's lifeless corpse sprawled on the ground. Fire and blood. Our names shall live as legends. And that is where we're going to end it for this episode, because that is a victory. And we'll reappoint the old council. And winter is coming. Well, what a episode that's been, and a slightly longer one too. As you can see, this is a problem that has been brewing this session, is Azhoth, this massive Kalish tribe that has formed to our north. We're going to need to do something about this. We, surely we can't just let these guys down here. They're weak. They're only 15,000 men. And we have dragons. But, you know, dragon conquering them is just going to give us a bunch of useless land that can't even be colonized. There's no point in that. We just need to think of what we want to do with them. However, I don't really want a war because we've just been successful in one. It did wound us. We are wounded. <laughs> but while we are wounded... We are also, I mean, we've got a very notable sort of history. We are a, a true, I mean, compared to the other ones, we've only fought one dragon war. We've now fought two dragon wars. And Azantis, like, this is the second dragon Azantis has killed. Duskfire and Capaxes, both of them fully grown dragons. Capaxes older than him and Duskfire, not too dissimilar in age. Azantis is, is a real mighty beast. Yeah, very lucky to have. And of course, if... Uh, Iflix's kid, of course. Iflix still unridden. Interesting. I thought Iflix had a rider. And who rides on uh, Iflinos? Yes, my brother. It is good that me and my brother both ride sort of the, you know, the children of Iflix. This this sort of unity there. I very much like that. We won't talk about how he's so much a better fighter than me, though. <laughs> so, as our episode comes to an end, we are 43... Our army is back to a massive size. Our coffers are massive. Ignore the fact we're losing money right now. That's because we were just at war. Uh, we have defeated and slain more dragons. Just some, uh, showing our power off even more. And not only have we begun colonies in Oris. We've begun the most important colony of all. Will it be successful though? That is a different question. Either way, we are going to invest. And we are going to do all we can to make Valyria prosper. We're going to hope and pray the events fall in our favour on Valyria. Because if we own this, we can start to begin to once more expand out. And we can claim the Isles and turn this from an empire of North Valyria to the empire of Valyria. And I'm so excited for that possibility. Emperor Valerian could go down in legend. But if that's going to happen... Find out in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Until then.